Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Our special guest today, Mitch Ingram from Emerson Custom. Thanks, Thanks for, for having in. me. Glad to have you here. We've got a, a really cool pedal here to talk about, which is going to be uh, demoed by our own Don Carr. Thanks for being here, Don. Appreciate it. Sure thing, Mitch. Absolutely. But let's talk a little bit about Emerson Custom. Yeah. The company's been around since about 2009, right? Yeah, we started in 2009 as a hobby. Hmm. Incorporated in 2011. Um, started to really take off from there. Right. Um, small family company, uh, only got about three employees right now, but uh, with this baby, I think we're going to need to hire a few more. So. I think so too. It's, it's a really cool pedal. So did you start out mainly doing the, uh, what I remember first from you guys, are the, uh, the pre-wired kits and the parts. Is that where the company came from? Correct, yeah. Started doing that and um, found just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of success there. Mm -hmm. um, the, the economy at the time... Uh, you know, was not the greatest. Um, and I kind of felt like, you know, if people aren't necessarily buying guitars, they're always going to need to be repair their guitars. Mm -hmm. And so we really honed in on that um, to see how do we make um, the player's experience better? You know, what's, what's the, the problem? How do we solve it? Um, so uh, just, you know, being experienced with that, um, learning the ins and outs on you know, strats and tellies, Les Pauls, you know, main guitars people are playing. Right. Um, we just developed uh, drop-in kits for guitars, uh, trying to make it the easiest possible if, you know, somebody wanted to do it themselves or, you know, take it to their local tech, you know, uh, just a reliable, easy-to-go package. Right. For someone to just drop straight in and get some good results from. Right. So. Don, you and I have listened to some of the drop-in kits on, on various guitars mm -hmm. and things. They make quite a difference. Yeah, it really does. In fact, I put the uh, Strat kit in my Strat with the blender on it, and I really love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really do. That's, that's my favorite. That's If I ever get... No, I, I have a Strat, but that's the first thing I do is throw the blender in there, and then I'm <laughs> yeah. good to go. It's yeah. like changing strings. just got to throw it in there because yep. that, uh, that blend knob, it's... Uh, it's Almost like a second tone, but it's not. Uh, it's not a treble, uh, treble roll off. It's. It's like, I don't know. It. It's just special. You know? <laughs> yeah. It yeah, blends right, in something right, that right. I. You know, you just Secret can't sauce. get. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, there's nothing mag like nothing yeah. magical on paper yeah. going on. It's right, just right. opening up a new possibility that yeah. you know is not typically found on a strat. Right. So. Right. 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 Yeah. So what led you into creating pedals? You've got two other uh, pedals in addition to, well, three other pedals in addition to the, the one we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. So um, 2012 uh, started, I've always kind of played um, at local venues, you know, smaller venues. Um, uh, and 2012, I started dabbling in pedals. Just curiosity got the best of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, first pedal was the M drive. Um, uh, I wanted the the venue I was playing at. I couldn't crank the amp. Uh, it had to be quiet, which sucks. You know, you <laughs> can't hit that sweet spot. You know, right. where your amp's not hot. Right. And so, started messing around with some stuff. And uh, I tried a bunch of different other overdrives. He brought them, and they were they were better than what I was working with. But I was like, man, I need to figure this out. So, I I built a few things and. I, I brought what became the M drive um, to, the, to the gig, and um, the sound man was like, what are you doing? Like, that sounds good. I was like, I think so too. And uh, within like two months, I think, you know, I'd never built pedals before. And uh, so I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, build 50 of them, we'll see if they sell. If not, you know, it's not a big deal. And within like a month, they were all sold out, and I didn't know what happened. So I was like reeling. <laughs> and uh, then a couple months later, I think we started actually figuring out, you know, how to enter that game. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we started in the pedal world. Just right. uh, solving, not that, you know, other things didn't fit that role, but to me, I wanted to add kind of our own 
signature touch to that, and it, it worked well for me, and I think it works well for a lot of players that um, kind of want a little sparkle, a little low-end warmth um, to their amp, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it does it well. So Right, which brings us to the latest pedal. This is the Pomeroy, Correct. and this is a dual pedal, both an overdrive with six different voices, Correct. as well as an up to 24 dB boost, and those are independently switchable. Correct, yeah. Tell us about the pedal. Yeah, so um, on the right side over here, we have a clean boost. Um, it's very unique in the fact that um, you can throw any amp at it and it's going to it's going to respond differently depending on the headroom the amp has, the wattage. Mm -hmm. So if you were to throw this at a, like a 100 watt Marshall, it's going to react a lot differently than if you put it through like a deluxe reverb, you know, to like 22 watts. So um, just the boost on this is incredibly loud, but in a good way. Um, if you have a, a clean amp that can turn up to 11, you know, this thing will really make it shine mm -hmm. and get some really, really good clean tones out of it. And then if your amp is a lower headroom amp, you can uh, make it break up in a really good way. So um, it doesn't have an EQ control on the boost side. Um, we specifically designed it to be incredibly clear and I uh, hate the word transparent, but it's it's so clear that if you were to run it through PA, just just the, the boost side through an acoustic, like it would sound like your acoustic, just louder. It's <laughs> not going to add any any gain at all. No coloration. Com just complete clean volume. Right. So, um, which leads us to the overdrive side over here. The overdrive comes first in the single path. Okay. Then goes into the boost. Um, we wanted the boost to be incredibly clear, incredibly powerful, so that the overdrive, they, they would work very well together. Mm -hmm. um, the overdrive has, on the bottom row, um, a three-band active EQ, plus or minus 15 dBs on each knob. Um, so, depending on the guitar you're playing, I like that one's pretty versatile, but if you have a Strat, it's a little bright, you want to you know, tame it down, you know, you can cut the highs a little bit or boost the lows. Um, depending on the amp you're running, um, you know, also plays in a, a factor there. Um, you can also, um, with the different clipping um, voicings there, um, you can kind of create a new overdrive almost. Um, you can boost the mids and almost do like a tube screamer type, mm. or you can cut them and boost your lows and crank it and do some metal. Um, so uh, it really, it's kind of up to your imagination how you want to do that. Right, um, right, very versatile. <clears throat> yeah, so the, um, you've got a six way uh, rotary clipping switch right here. Uh, one through six, one being the quietest as far as overall output. Um, but in one you get um, a nice vintagey kind of spongy overdrive. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of output, but we wanted it that way so that if someone just wants a nice low output vintage overdrive, they got that. Um, if they want to warm it up, get a little louder, you can throw in the boost and um, adjust it to taste. Mm -hmm. um, moving forward from two up to five is some symmetrical and asymmetrical options, different LED diode combos. Um, and then six is completely bypassing um, any diode. So any breakup you're getting is from the op amp, um, which sounds really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, up top, you got gain, um, blend, which is clean blend. So if you're just wanting to run it like a standard overdrive, just completely dime it and it'll act like, nor like a normal overdrive would. Um, all the way off is your original dry signal and then anywhere in between is blending between the two. Right. The master uh, is master volume for the overdrive. You can use it to attenuate the output of the overdrive leading into the boost or just into your amp if you're not using the boost. On the boost side, you do have a high-low toggle, which uh, in the low position takes you from 0 to 12 dBs, and the up, the high position, takes you from 12 to 24 dBs. Okay. Um, the insert, we have an insert right here that we're running a delay through on the opening, um, is uh, you can use a splitter 
and uh, run it as an effects loop. So if you want to run a delay or a combo of drives or fuzzes or whatever you like, you can do that. And it goes in between the boost and the drive. In between the boost and the drive. So when you Correct. turn the drive on, you get the delay. When you turn the drive off... It's still there. It's still there. Okay. It's, yeah, it's always there. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Um, well, let's take a, a tour of some of the sounds. Why don't we start out with the, uh, the switch set to one. Let's kind of set up a basic kind of tone here, and then we'll step through the six different diode options. Okay. So before we start the playing examples, Don, let's listen to the clean sound of the amplifier with a pedal bypassed. We're playing through a Fender 57 Tweed Deluxe. Right, and I'm playing a PRS 513, and I'm using the bridge position. So we're set here with the EQ at 12 o'clock. We've got the gain all the way up, the blend set to full overdrive, there's no clean mixed in, and our master is also all the way up. And we're on the first setting, which you said is a dual germanium Correct. setting. Yeah. Don, let's hear this one. Okay. Yeah, that has that vintage overdrive kind of tone to it. Kind of a softer attack. Mm -hmm, it certainly is. Yeah, you can feel you can feel it when you're playing. Definitely a softer attack for sure. Right now, you said that is a symmetrical, correct design. Yeah. And if we move to position two, what do we have there? We have symmetrical again. Okay, now let's hear that one. Okay. Those are silicon diodes, right mm -hmm. there. So it's a little little louder, a mm -hmm. little harder. Right? Yeah, a little tighter. Yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. more amp like it almost sounds mm -hmm. to me. In a, a little smoother, mm -hmm. maybe not quite as quite as uh, ragged yeah. on top. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The uh, the germanium diodes, uh, I hate to chase a rabbit here, but we whenever you buy germanium diodes, they're not really germanium. Like so we actually went and sourced them with a company that makes them. Hmm. So that was uh, we actually had to rebuy our inventory on that. Really? So it was kind of cool, but it sounds way different, and we really like it because it's uh, it's it is what we say it is. It's yeah. germanium diodes. Sure, so, sounds like yeah. it's worth the difference because uh, the <clears throat> the stuff that's labeled as germanium is actually just silicon. They just have the part numbers wrong. Huh? How about so, that? How about that? Wow. Well, there's two distinct voices right there. If we go to number three, what do we get? You got asymmetrical right there. Okay, asymmetrical <laughs> clipping. Awesome tone as well. Yeah. yeah. So those are nice. that's uh, going to be three silicon diodes right there, hmm. and then in four you got a silicon diode and an LED and asymmetrical. Okay. A little chunkier uh, bottom end, a little thicker tone, isn't mm -hmm, it? Sure is, man. Yeah, really thickening up now. Let's go to number five. What do we have here? Yeah, so you got a pair of LEDs right here. Okay. Tight. Yeah, yeah really tight, man. Super responsive. Yeah. Let's go to number six. Now this okay. has no diodes this in it. Takes the clipping, the the clipping in this rotary switch out of the circuit. Okay. We're still gonna get some breakup from the op amp, but uh, this is probably the most open you're gonna get the overdrive right here. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Very responsive. Yeah, super Actually, nice. I noticed that with all six of these positions is it doesn't sound real compressed. It sounds like it's pretty mm -hmm. dynamically responsive. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we tried to make all the voicings usable. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the lower output stuff can, you know, you can make up for that, uh, the low volumes with the boost. And it okay. sounds really, really good. Um, so we tried to make something that you could just take one pedal to the gig and it would cover all your dirt needs. 
Right. Um, it doesn't have MIDI or presets. Um, there's other people that do that, and they do it very well. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to make something that's pretty straightforward, you know, pretty uh, easy to plug and play. Right. So, um, but still extremely versatile because all six of those voicings are, each one is unique. And then, of course, you also have an active EQ on this. It's not passive, so, you, can, so you get both boost and cut out of that. So correct. there's a lot of tone shaping power on board as well. Yeah, so you can do, you know, like drop tune stuff um, or even just, you know, like drop D and, um, you know, you can you boost your lows a little bit and cut your mids. Um, if you want to do, you know, if you need like a mid boost, uh, like a, you know, almost like a tube screamer sound mm -hmm. that you weren't finding in there, you know, just boost the mids. Let's hear, let's hear that. Sure. Probably going to get more of a tube screamer sound, probably in position five because it has some LEDs in there. Right. And then, of course, we can dial in the clean tone along with the overdriven sound, and that gives you more articulation. Let's listen to a little bit of that. So if we pull this back to, say, 50%. It's amazing what a difference that makes, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It softens the whole thing up, definitely. Mm -hmm. But nice. you also get the pick attack mm -hmm. from, the clean, from the clean sound that kind of articulates the whole thing. Yeah. So now one other option is we're using the overdrive to actually hit the front end of the amp pretty hard here. Right. But with that master volume control, you can pull that back. Yeah, yeah, you can pull it back, and it still sounds good. Um, you know, most or some overdrives, you got to run it pretty hot in order for the gain to sound good. And uh, we designed this so that you can turn it down, and it still sounds really good. So we'll leave it maxed, and then I'll kind of turn it down as you play. Okay, cool. Right. Yeah. Sounds great. I should mention we're playing through a 57 Tweed Deluxe Fender amplifier, so the front end of this is pretty clean. Yeah, yeah, it's really clean right now. Now, the other option we have for really controlling what's going on here is engaging the boost circuit. Yeah. Um, so, you're able to know exactly how many dBs you're boosting, mm -hmm. um, which I think is very useful because if, especially with the different clipping options, uh, and you want to know okay, how hard do I need to hit that, this specific amp, you know, compared to that one, or with my Strat, the pickups are a little lo lower output than, you know, say a Les Paul or your PRS, you can kind of get a feel for it rather than just guessing with your knob because there's so much variation. And, you know, with 24 dBs on tap, you know, it's kind of nice to know exactly where exactly you want to be. Sure. Give us an example of what it sounds like when we're running one of the lower output settings and then you're using the boost to bring it back up. Yeah, so one is pretty quiet compared to the others. Um, so uh, we'll run through the low position the, um, and the low toggle and we'll just set it to zero and we'll turn it on um, and we will go from there. Cool. Ready? Yep. All right. At that point, you are really crunching the front end of the yeah. amplifier. You're pushing that hard. For sure. Now, we can also use the boost circuit by itself. We don't have to have that engaged while we're using the overdrive. Correct. So if we turn this off, show us what happens. Yeah, so we're in the low spot right now. Um, so uh, we're going to turn it up to about six. Gives you a nice little sparkle, a uh, little, and uh, we can turn it up a little bit more. That's in the low spot, so uh, 
We can turn it up even more. Yeah, so you can actually use that to push the front end of the amp into clipping. Right, yeah, so if you want, you know, more of a, uh, you know, like a boost, boost style, you know, overdrive, just pushing your amp, you can get that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also helps to compensate, you know, for any, um, you know, signal um, that you need to make up on the overdrive side. Sure. Mitch, thanks so much for coming in and uh, demoing the, uh, the Pomeroy with us. What an amazing pedal, man. That is super versatile. You bet. And thanks congratulations on the success of your uh, company. Come Thank back you. soon. We will. Good to see you. And thanks cool you. first name, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don, thanks so much for your awesome playing as always. Uh, always thank a, you, always a treat to listen to you. I appreciate it, man. And thank you for joining me for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects, and we'll be making a lot of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Mm -hmm.